All right, people, happy new year. Yes, it is now 2017. And to start off the year, I decided that we are going to go ahead and do my ban list prediction. So uh, I predict that the list will come out probably mid January ish, right before uh, the DDD structure deck, just to tweak things a little bit, not any too drastic changes. I don't think we're going to be, you know, taking down decks and changing the top tier net or anything along those lines, but just a couple of tweaks and stuff like that. Uh, thank you guys for all the support on my top five hits Konami should do, but probably won't too. Um, lots of likes, lots of views, and uh, really responsive, so I really appreciate that. But uh, if you haven't seen that video already, link is in the description. Go ahead and click go to that video because all of those cards that I've discussed in that video will not be in this video. So one of the reasons why I put up that video is so, like, hey, let me discuss the cards that people generally think will be hit or, you know, big red alerts with cards that people won't hit. Uh, one hit, and then in my balance prediction, they're not going to be on there, so I don't have to have people in the comment section below this video being like, hey, how come you didn't put X card on here? It's like, okay, because I already talked about it in this video and said that Konami probably won't hit it, alright? So, this is a balance prediction. Prediction. This is not a discussion. This is not a wish list. No bias. You can see the picture. You see it on the thumbnail. I have no bias, you know? And... I, I don't want to, you know, blag or gloat or anything, but I kind of feel like I do a really good job on these balance predictions because I try to step out of being a duelist and try to get in Konami's head, try to see patterns, precedents, reasons, money. Like, there's so many things that go into making a uh, ban list that people sometimes when they do balance predictions, they just don't see or think. So, uh, I'm going to try to step out of my norm and try to step out of being a duelist, being a participant in the game and try to think what will Konami do, why will they do it, is there any precedence, is there any form to that, and give you guys a great ban list prediction. Hopefully the ban list from TCG will come soon, we'll do that too while we still haven't gotten anything yet as of me recording this video, and hopefully we get it and lots of things on this ban list prediction will be seen on the actual TCG ban list for whenever 2017, the beginning half of 2017, like I said. It could be January, I can see it also being maybe in February or March as well, but you know, that's a little late. We've, we've gone without a list for a couple months now, so January seems like a good time. Alright, so let's go ahead and start off with it. I'm going to actually do things backwards because I feel like doing things backwards brings up more anticipation. I know I watch a ton of ban list predictions. Doing, I do a lot of research. Like I pretty much watch everybody's ban list prediction. Everybody uh, is uploading videos every day. I refresh and I'm like, today, ban list prediction. Watch every video. Uh, you know, I go on Pojo Forum to read people's what they say and I, I just get a, a ton of input and, you know, figure out precedence through that way as well. But it's just like, hey, this is the card that says, say, bam, now limited, semi, unlimited, you know, it's just like a downhill track, you know, it's like, you really only came for what the, the juicy hits, it's not really so much like, oh, uh, this card can go up three, like, who cares, it's going up to three, so I like to do things backwards, so we're going to go semi-limited and go up to ban. So let's go ahead and start off with unlimited, unlimited, these are cards that are going up to three, starting it off, Thunder King Ryo. I don't, <laughs> personally, no, no, I say, I'm not going to have any bias. Person has no bias. Personally, I don't think Dr. King Ryle should go up to see. Dr. King Ryle is a very, very powerful monster. 1900, prevents searching, stops in inherent summons by treating like he's, he's deserved his spot when he got hit. Uh, we found that two previously, uh, then he got hit down to one back when the game was much slower. Now, Konami decided to go ahead and move him up to two. He hasn't done too much this format, he really hasn't done much of anything. Uh, so I believe that he's going to move up to three's precedent. Uh, also, another reason is. First time in like forever, we actually had Konami explaining why they did the choices on the list. And one of the things when they said Thunder King Ryo is like, okay, the game is fast for him, um, no one really plays them. And they clearly stated that this is one of the choices that they're just playing. I'm just moving up to three. So, uh, despite the fact that me personally, I don't like Thunder King Ryo three, Thunder King Ryo is going to probably move up to three. So, don't be surprised if you see him uh, at three on the next list. All right, next card going to three, I have. Wind Up Magician. This is an easy uh, predict as well. Uh, they move Wind Up Magician to two. They're probably going to go ahead and move them up to three. I mean, there's really no point to just keep them at two. As, you know, and while they seem like they're fine with you having multiple Wind Up Magicians carry on their hand, I don't know. You know, uh, I, I not, I'm going to say right now, I'm not predicting that Carrier is moving up. Uh, there's no precedence. There's no reason for Konami to really do it outside of just like, all right, we're buying power creeps. And uh, if you remember correctly, in the OG, when they buy unbanned carriers, they actually put Hunter. So there's going to have to be some tweaking, some switching around. You know, it's not just as simple as like, all right, carrier, you can come off and go to three, and then you have the one to bloop, and they pick everything out of your hand again. It's just like, ah, you know, it's got to, there's a little bit of percussion when it comes to it. So um, 
similar to how they just moved out Magician to 2 and did not ban Carrier, and I can, I can see them uh, moving Magician to 3. You still have Carrier ban, but hey, I mean, 3 Magicians is better than 2, right? Alright, and the last card that I have going to 3, and this one's an iffy. This is an iffy. I have a couple of cards that are like, eh. Yeah. The last card I have going to 3 is Sangam, but also limited. Limited or unlimited. There's, you know, I can see Konami doing it either or. Uh, lately, when it comes to cards getting their Orion and getting off ban, Konami does one of two things. They either put it at one, see how it does, move to two, see how it does, move to three, and you're you know you're off the list. Or another thing that they actually do is uh, they just go precedence off of OCG, similar similar to what they did with Demark, and we're just like ban to three Demark, you know. So OCG does have three Sangan. They do have three Sangan. And it is questionable whether they're going to just move Sangan off the list or put them at one, test them, see, and then move them to two, move them to three. So that's questionable. The thing that makes it, because it's President of Bulletin, makes it seem like they probably tried to limit it, is because TCG is the one who actually banned Sangan. OG didn't have Sangan banned, they eroded him, but he was still legal. We, we banned Sangan. So, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like, well, remember Sangan was at one, and then we banned him, so let's see how he is back at his previous position at one, see how he goes, and then we'll move him up. So that's why I have limited or unlimited, because it just depends on how Konami feels. They can go presence off the OCG, or they can just go uh, off of how they feel uh, when it comes to the card off of the pass as well. Um, I have some honorable mentions, because uh, I just don't feel like these cards will actually get moved, but it's not to uh, talk about it. So, uh, starting off with Honest. Uh, OCG has three on us, and that's a probably an easy card to predict, but it seems like Konami TCG is fine with Honest at two, uh, not the high consistency of three on us, and if there was any a time to move Honest to three, it would have been, you know, around ABC time where they're, you know, trying to promote ABCs, or you're like, oh, three AB, you know, three on your ABC deck. Now since the time that phase has passed, we're not moving away from more light themed decks, there's just no reason or a uh, purpose to really move up on it. So if they were going to do it, they would have done it before. So I believe that last would probably stay at two. And another honorable mention is the Beast Dragon and Dragon's Mean. Uh, these cards, of course, Dragon were related. They got indirectly hit when we were dealing with Dragon Rulers. And it seems like if Konami wanted to move them up to three, they would have already been at three at this point. Um, you know, Dragon Regime is very powerful as well. It sends dragons, and the British Dragon is kind of that one card uh, Synchro Summon from the graveyard. So it seems like Konami is just happy leaving both of them at two. So I'm not going to predict. If it happens, great, awesome. But I'm not going to go ahead and predict it because I just don't see it, you know. And I'm kind of sick and tired of predicting those cards and them not moving. So there we go. So I just have three unlimited this time, which is fine. That's a, that's a fine number. All right, moving on to semi -limit. Uh, and let me put a disclaimer. Semi-limits are the most difficult part for me to predict. They really are. Um, well, I must say I'm a very conservative duelist. I generally don't see a lot of cards going from like one to two uh, too often. You know, generally Konami does it, and then it's easy to predict cards going from two to three, you know. But, for example, I would have never predicted that you would put Thunder King, Ryo, or even Melinda Magician from 1 to 2, so it's really difficult for me. Well, on the other hand, from the other side of the spectrum, I have some cards that I'm predicting are going to go to 2, but they can just as easily go down to 1. And I'm going to go ahead and put a disclaimer on pretty much all the semi-limited cards that I'm going to state here. So, with that, let's go ahead and drop into the semi-limited. So, starting off with semi-limited, I have Speedroid Teratop. Now, I know, we have precedent from the OCG, the cards should be limited, definitely should be limited, should pretty much be put in the same boat as Tour Guide, but I can, at the same time, I can also see Konami trying to just lower the consistency, especially too stupid with how uh, money-hungry they are, and they're just like, hey, you know, that Wind Witch kind of speed red hybrid's coming out, we're gonna put that in the set, make money off of that, so I can easily see them, oh, and of course, the Yag Beast and all that great stuff, it's pretty much the card is just crazy good, we know that, tear it up. Um, it seems like when OCG, when they want to hit something, they want to hit it. They want to hit it hard, you know? Well, we kind of meander sometimes depending on the card, you know? Depending on the card, depending on the situation. Um, they're like, no, get fucking Norton out of here. Or we're like, oh, no, let's try Norton at one, you know? They're like, all right, well, we, we're dealing with this pendulum shit. Well, we banned Monkey Board, but you know what? We're also going to you know, put Pensork to one. And we're just like, yeah, no, we're just going to leave Pensork at threes and ten, you know? Ah, you know? So... I think this could possibly be a time that we meander, or we try to turn our top at two, it's probably going to be still too much, and we're probably going to end up limiting it like suppressive. But the reason why I can also see a one set presence easy, is your card reserved to be at one? Yes, definitely. Terra top deserves to be at one. 
But I can also see Konami putting that too. And they like said there's still a little bit more money to be made off of it. So uh, yeah, Ceratop two, but uh, as one as well. All right, next card I can see going down to two is Dante Traveler Burning Abyss. This is just an, yet another asterisk disclaimer because of course we do have precedent. Um, while we have seen PK Fire do a lot this format, you know, a lot of people when they do advanced prediction, they look towards the end of their half of the format, while well, Konami looks at the entire format, where they were like, okay, we hit Burning Abyss. We put Beatrice to one, we put Sir to one, the deck is dead. And turn around, next format, what do we see? PK Fire, PK Fire, PK Fire, PK Fire. Um, hopefully by this time, Konami realizes that they just have to hit Dante. Dante has to be hit. But I can also see them meandering once again, where um, if you kind of hit Dante to one, the deck is just dead, you know, Burning Abyss is done. While Dante at two, you can just have Dante put back to Dante, and then you can still kind of have two Dantes. So, I can see Konami just meandering semi limited but definitely I can also see Konami just dealing with set precedents. OCG limited, we are unlimited, we're not sending any more PK fire, good, alright, we can move on, you know. Uh, so, that's another semi limit I could possibly see, but limited as well. Alright, moving on to the next semi limit Solemn Strike. Uh, Strike is another one of those cards, like, it, it's too powerful, it really is. It's too powerful to stay at three. Uh, last time it, we had a bad list, it didn't get hit, we got the reprints, we got the 10, Solemn Strike, we sold money, awesome. It's time to start doing some tweaking, some adjusting when it comes to the game. We already know the TCG, uh, Konami, we're very, very conservative when it comes to how much back row you get, what kind of back row you get, what kind of you do. You use, especially when we have no Heavy Storm or Happy Feather Duster like the OCG. So, there is just no logical reason why Strike should remain at multiples outside of, hey, we're reprinting it making money, when you compare it to other back row who is also hate things like Bottomless and Pulse and Torrential Tribute and Ring of Destruction, things like that. There's just no comparison, you know? Uh, I can easily see Konami taking this slow, kind of like what they did with Solemn Warning, putting Strike down to two, then eventually down to one, meandering, but, um, I mean, we clearly saw that, you know, uh, decks generally don't play more than two, maybe three strike anyway, and it's a card that deserves to be at one. We've also seen a lot of people say strike at one, warning at one, judgment at one, and that's not a good choice either. We don't need judgment to, you know, make a trifecta. You know, warning can be at one, strike can be at one, and it will be just, just fine. So, I'm going to say strike at two. I can see, easily see, you know, me refreshing the page, seeing strike going down, seeing some of seeing some strike. But, um, definitely one as well. Alright, and the last card at Summer Limited, I have Reckless Greed. Reckless Greed um, is kind of the indirect hit to Paleozoic while also being a very powerful card itself. Uh, there's not too much you can really hit at Paleozoic at the current moment. Uh, Tree Toad Limited is probably an inevitability. I don't think that uh, Bahama Sharks going to get it, but I do think another card that uh, involving that uh, engine might get hit. But Reckless Greed as we clearly saw this return in this format, uh, bringing it back into the eyes of Konami. Uh, Reckless Greed is just kind of that card where if you get multiple, it's just crazy, you know? Um, and we do have precedence, and it can also be limited as well, but in one, it's just a bad card, you know? It's a neck. You play it, you draw two, you skip your next shootout phases, it's a neck. While at least two, if you get the two, then wow, you know, you get to go ahead and get that plus, you earned it. But at three, that's a that's a whole new brand new hand, and we already know the craziness is. We do have precedence. Reckless, Reckless Greed was limited to one at one point, similar to um, Upstar Goblin, you know, the Hobening. Uh, but I kind of feel like it'll probably be put in the same boat as Maxi, uh, where it's some only, it's less consistent, you don't see it as much. It's that draw card, but it's not, you know, that direct draw card. It's still a neg. Uh, so I can definitely see Konami uh, limiting, uh, semi-limiting Reckless Greed, but also limiting because of precedent. So, uh, yeah, there we go. All right, and uh, with that, that is, uh, all of the semi-limits that I have. You know, so semi-limits are very difficult for me. Uh, I don't really have any cards that I can predict going from 1 to 2. I mean, they're there for a reason. I mean, if Konami starts moving them, then alright, but I really can't think of anything right now. Maybe it's just a conservative me. Not any bias, just, I don't know. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the limit. So, uh, cards number 1, I already mentioned the same game, so that's a, that's a limit or a limit. So, uh, starting it off, we have Blackwing, Gofu, the Hazy, Shadow, uh, or the Vague Shadow, or whatever. Uh, I can see Konami 
limiting Gofu to lower the consistency of the Metal Foes Synchro Plex. I don't think Konami really has a problem with Metal Foes, you know? And Metal Foes aren't really so much of a problem within themselves. Um, they're just kind of this pendulum punch, normal deck, I mean, the pendulum mechanic, well, you know, it's kind of crazy that they can just pop face up cards and, you know, that can trigger something. Uh, just the enabling that kind of Gofu does, and, and I know Konami can see that, it's the most uh, predominant play that uh, that deck plays outside of, you know, just throwing in Cleef or Scout and doing all those shenanigans, but I don't think Scout's gonna get banned because of that. Uh, I can definitely see them lowering the consistency of Gofu, um, and then you having to structure your deck on something else, you know? Uh, taking out more of that filler fluff shit, similar to what they did with uh, Kirin. Uh, just lowering the consistency of it, so uh, while I do think that Ultimaya is so broken, uh, I don't think that Konami's gonna have too much of a problem with it if you just lower the consistency of it. You constantly see decks that are metaphors just running three Gofu, three Gofu, three Gofu, three Gofu. So Gofu, get a limit, still got one, go ahead and do the play if you got it, but the consistency is lowered, and it's pretty much in the same boat as Kirin, so uh, that is my first uh, guess for limiting. Alright, moving on, I have Cyframe Lord Omega. So. Um, this is precedence, it's easy. Um, some people say that it doesn't need to get hit, 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 some people say it does. Some people think that Dark Synchro is a problem, some people do think it's a problem. Uh, it's easily a problem, you know. When you look at the entire format, it's a degenerate deck in the format. Uh, we can clearly see that, especially, uh, Cypher and Lord Omega has multiples is a problem. It's a very powerful card, but, um, he deserves a limit. Precedence from OCG is just easy to protect that. Uh, dealing with Dark Synchro is just easy to do if you just follow what OCG did. Um, and go with that cycle, so uh, I can definitely see Cypher and Lord Omega getting limited down to one. And uh, my uh, last card that I have limited down to one um, is a kind of contingency as well, yet another one. So I'm going to predict that either Magic Spectre Raccoon Bumpuku gets limited or Magic Spectre Unicorn Kirin gets banned. Now, I can easily see that we just follow the OCG, we ban Kirin. Kirin, get out of here, you know, you know. Uh, but with the limit of Kirin, we didn't see too much of the lower consistency that, you know, we would expect with only one Kirin because we have a card that can search Kirin, i.e. being Bunkaboo, at three. So they just throw in three Bunkaboo, one, you know, two or three Bunkaboo, throw in the Kirin, and bam, you know, you still have that Kirin. Um, I can easily see Konami either saying, like, you know, fuck it, get Magic Specter Unicorn Kirin out of here, we don't want that anymore, banning it. Or, I can see them lowering the consistency by hitting Magic Specters. Now, I know hitting Magic Specters on Goku to 1 would hurt Magic Specters, but you gotta remember, Magic Specters are actually doing some kind of in the format as well. Okay, I'm not really predicting that they're gonna hit too much of the upper decks, the ABCs, the, the Metal Foes directly, the, the Frogs or the Zones directly. But, the past stuff, the PK Fire, the, you know, the things like that, they can just push out of the way. Um, I can easily see them, you know, hitting Bumpuku down to one as being the stratos of the deck, uh, pushing, the, hitting the consistency up, you get in the current in outside decks, and in the deck of Magic Spectres, who, you know, with Card Demise and uh, Ties of the Brotherhood, have done some things to uh, the game, uh, the meta game of Yu-Gi-Oh! as well, and of course they are a powerful archetype, archetype that can't be targeted from a card effect, so, uh, your opponent's card effect, so that's a thing in itself as well. So, I'm gonna put a contingency either or. Uh, I would probably prefer Kieran Ban, just because if you kind of hit Magis uh, Bunk Buku down to 1, that would really hurt Magic Spectres, and Magic Spectres don't really need Kieran. You know, I've played Magic Spectres plenty of times, and I never really used Kieran, while Bumboku is a very important card. But just the fact that, you know, Bumboku is the searcher that can search Kieran, Bumboku can search itself, um, I can definitely see Kanabi being like, alright, well, one Kieran is fine, but we need a lot of consistency in that, so we're putting the Ruby down to one, now you only technically have two Kieran. If you want to play, like, Cat or anything, whatever, it's slow, so at least your opponent gets a turn before you just, you know, drop that Unicorn on them, so, um, that's right, good to see. Alright, and with that, we can go ahead and move on to the bands. So, I already talked about Kieran getting banned. Uh, next card I can see getting banned is Level Eater. That's another uh, card. You know, people are going back and forth when it comes to what should we do with Dark Synchro? How should it be addressed? Should it be addressed? Should we ban any lower? Should we ban Precedence is easy. It's really it's an easy, easy card to play. You know, if it's a problem in the OCG, it's probably going to be a problem with TCG. It's just easier just to do it with it, you know. Uh, I can easily see just trying to, you know, fiddle around with it, not really doing anything too much uh, with level either of uh, things of not precedence, but it seems like when we don't follow the OCG's precedence, especially their hits, 
it tends to bite us in the ass, you know, we've seen that time and time again, especially with like Monkey Board and stuff like that, and uh, Pendulum Call, where it's just like, yeah, look, you didn't do what we did in the LCG, now look, and then what do we do next, let's turn around and do it. So, uh, while I can see Konami kind of meandering and not doing it, uh, we, I mean, it's easy precedent. So, we have Dark Synchro problems in the, in the format. We definitely did. So, it's just easy just to, you know, copy the OCD. Now, is that what Eater a healthy card? No, we didn't. You special summon the same monster multiple times, it's not once per turn. Uh, going off like crazy, synchro summoning like crazy, decking out your opponent because they max seed you, going into three Omegas and a Trish, and, you know, D Super and the Trish, and you know, doing all those crazy things. I mean, it wouldn't be possible without level eater and level eater is not a healthy card he's not and people are like oh well if we we can leave a level eater alone we just all we have to do is just you know ban omega uh, hit omega you know limit omega down to one ban omega or whatever you know and it's just like make us find out one but if we leave level eater even if you some people are like oh we just limit him you only need one level eater you only need one only one uh, you just keep on using this effect over and over again. Uh, you can easily modify your Dark Synchro deck to be a little bit less Dark, you know, Synchro. Especially as, um, for example, let's say we limit Level Eater and limit uh, Cypher and Lord Omega. You have one Omega, you have one Level Eater. You send that one Level Eater, continue to do your Synchro play, and then you can draw multiple cards. Go into Trish, pick a card, Desynchro, Synchro, pick a card, Desynchro, Synchro, pick a card, and it's just like, yeah. That, like, okay, well, that's Trish's fault, we just really banned Trish. Or, uh, you know, that's g Circle's fault, we just banned... No, 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 no. The problem is that you drew multiple cards, got deeper into your deck with the Coral Dragon and uh, the TG Hyper Iberia and the Formula Circle that you made off of this abusing that level eater over and over and over and over and over. 14, 15, 16 times in one turn summoning this one level eater. It's like, no. No, this card's not, it, you know, if this card, if Level Eater was made today, it wouldn't be like this. Because it was made back in that era, uh, we just kind of go ahead and just take it out of the decks. And, you know, so I apologize, and, oh, if you're killing my Synchro decks, you're killing my Jump Doppel or whatever. Alright, get a new deck. You know, there's plenty of new Synchro decks that Konami would love for you to purchase and play. So, have fun. You know, go ahead and play some Yang Zings or something. But, you know, this card's just not healthy. You know, it, don't, it deserves its ban. It definitely deserves it, as we saw from the OCG. So, that's easy precedent. And then, my last card that I have banned is Elder Entity Norton. Alright, so, Norton, you gotta go. You gotta go. I mean, you should've went. Really, you should've went. Um, this is precedence from the OCG as well, and this is just another one of those Konami meandering, TCG Konami meandering, and then it ends up biting us in the ass. And we, I wish Konami TCG would just learn that pretty much if something happens in the OCG, our next list, we just copy that. Immediately. Just copy, we don't even think about it. Unless, of course, it's not out yet, you know, but immediately copy it. I, I, I would be happy, um, I mean, it would help, it was that this list, before even Zodiacs came out, we were like, okay, Tenki to one, and, uh, you know, Teratop to one. I mean, Teratop should already go down the one, despite when it does a shenanigans and Zodiacs, but, you know, lower the consistency of things before it even happens. Or, uh, you know, doesn't get too deep where we, you know, it happens, then we get a ban list and we don't do anything about it, and then we get another ban list and then we do something about it, you know, meandering. Um, we saw OCG put Norton down to one. We, we did. Uh, and then literally the next list, OCG banned Norton. Uh, I, actually, I think they, no, Norton was at three. They limited instant fusion, which, I mean, it's pretty much one Norton, it really is. You know, if anything, that's better because then you can't just throw in three instant fusions for that one fucking Norton, which you would, some people do because, I mean, he's just so freaking powerful. So, uh, then they flipped it around, banned Norton, and then instant fusion went up to three. Norton needs to get banned, you know, he's always been this instigator, he's always been an enabler. Not only is he just a free monster off of an instant fusion, not even take care of the normal son, but he's gonna summon you a monster back from your graveyard. And I, oh my god, he just happens to be water, so you can go to Bahamut Shark Place, which we've seen plenty of this format. And while some people are like, okay, well, what if we like limit or ban instant fusion? Because, you know, if you want to do your rare fish combo, whatever, your tree tail combo of the Bahamut Shark, more power to you. Totally awesome, you know, more power to you. Uh, you know, I definitely think that precedents were eventually going to limit totally awesome. So you still want to do your, you know, your Bahamut Shark plays. You got one totally awesome, or totally awesome can play itself back. That's still kind of a problem, you know. It's just like, okay, Bahamut Shark, someone totally awesome. You deal or bait out the totally awesome, then totally awesome puts itself back, and then next turn, if you don't take out the Bahamut Shark, Bahamut Shark, someone totally awesome. I guess I could easily see Konami banning Bahamut Shark because it's kind of like totally awesome, but I can also see them not doing it. That's why I lean more towards the no, and just instead thought that they would probably just handle it in their own way by just banning Norton, not 
it as enabling as a play as usual. So, uh, Norton, if there's any time for you to get the fuck out of here, it's right now. And if Norton doesn't get banned on this list, then he might never get banned. I mean, we already got, you know, an upcoming future where... You do all your Momo Rat plays, you detach a Momo Rat, summon a Momo Rat, and then you know, interfere Norton, and then Norton summons Momo Rat, and then you summon top of Momo Rat, and do some more, you know, so, I mean, the future of Norton is already looking bleak, so, if there's any time to alert Konami that, you know, you want to get Norton the fuck out of here, it's this, it's this list right here, so, I'm gonna go ahead and predict that Norton's gonna get banned this time. And, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. So, there is my band's prediction. Um, it's actually in the description. Click it if you want to go ahead and look at all the cards that I talked about here. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed my band's prediction. We'll see how right I am, hopefully soon. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and comment your balance predictions in the comment section below, go ahead and um, tell me what you guys think about the band list and tell me guys what you think about my band prediction. Do you think I'm accurate? Do you not think I'm accurate? Do you think I'm biased at some point? If there's anything that you want to discuss, I will be down in the comment section below as well. Uh, replying to any comments that need to be uh, replied to, any questions along those lines, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think. So, thank you for watching this video. Thank you guys for all the support. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'm not really uploading too much right now. I'm kind of rebuilding my channel. So, if you guys could be patient with me, I'd be very appreciative. Um, but you might want to hit that bell, get notifications when I upload. Because uh, my schedule right now is iffy at best. So, it might be best that if you want to know when I upload, you know when I upload. So, click that uh, bell. And, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support, as usual. Uh, these balance predictions are a lot of fun. They really are. <laughs> try to get in Konami's head, uh, see precedent, see things, and um, just try to tweak the game to hopefully fit the next format. So, um, looking forward to having a discussion with you guys. Thanks for watching.